activation methods, we reach a high concentration of algae at a very high production rate. As you can see, our open algae ponds are built to various sizes as we are constantly testing conditions in order to optimize microalgae growth. For the past three years, we have been growing a few types of microalgae. Some are suitable for the production of bioenergy, oil, and bioethanol. The others are optimal for the production of food supplements for humans and animals. When we reach a high concentration of microalgae in the ponds, we harvest it by using a centrifuge which separates the algae from the water, turning it into paste. The paste undergoes a process of oil. As we burn it, releasing it, and it creates a tremendous carbon debt. Origin was launched to create a breakthrough technology to compete with petroleum. Algae grows in what we call a carbon neutral process. By that we mean that it sucks up CO2, so much so that it takes two tons of CO2 to make one ton of algae. It's beneficial because it's never pushing out more CO2 than it's using up. By going over to algae, we can preserve our lifestyle, keeping cars and trucks on the road that are internal combustion engines, running jets on liquid fuel. It's about changing the fuel, not the car. So one thing I wanted to, for you to see was, notice the diversity of bioreactors. One was vertical, one was a long flume, and you, and you notice the first video, they were making a couple of plumes, and they said we created of different sizes, but when I actually talked to the company, they're just experimenting. They're wasting a lot of, e of energy and money creating these bioreactors, but none of them really know how the fluid mechanics actually influences algae. And the, the second video, it was a vertical column, and it was a different type of light. So if they really want to optimize algae growth, they actually have to know very in depth as to how it grows and what influences on a fluid on a fluid scale. So um, this is kind of the model or how it looks like as of now. I basically have um, you, you apply uh, solid nutrients and the gaseous nutrients and it dissolves into the water. So there's some nutrient uh, transport equations that kind of simulate that that diffusion across the fluid interface. And, and basically, this, this whole, I basically drew this uh, based on uh, Odom. I don't know if you guys ever heard of Odom. It's like this famous um, uh, kind of a person that developed a way to design these, uh, it's like a way to draw this kind of mathematical relationships between various structures. Usually it's for biological systems. So. This bullet shape uh, is a uh, usually a producer unit, and these kind of uh, bird houses are storage units. So it, it really helped me to put together how the functions relate to each other. Um, so then, looking more in depth into each function, um, so this was the solar energy. So all the energy is basically extracted from the wavelength of that light. Um, so then, that's basically. I could calculate, I could kind of size my lights based on how much I would want them to be from this equation. And then I could apply um, heat, like a heat balance across the water, because I would want to be able to measure temperature at a very finite scale. And I would actually have to kind of solve a, an equation that kind of maps it out in every dimension, because it should be robust enough to model any kind of uh, bioreactor configuration. Um, there would also be the light when it actually passes through a fluid, whether it be gas or water, it, it decays because it's pushing through a denser fluid. So there's something called Beer's Law. I don't know if you guys ever heard of it, um, where it's like an exponential decay as it actually passes through a, a, a fluid based on the density of that fluid. Um, so these are my. Um, fermenting kinetics. I was kind of hoping you guys would know more about it. Um, so you guys could check on that. So this is kind of a diagram. Of, so this is a substrate. 
and then it passes into the organism, and basically the efficiency of how it converts that substrate to biomass is basically governed by um, this equation here. So if you think of this equation mathematically, um, you have a forward rate and backward rate. And basically you do some math, you assume steady state, um, I don't know if all of you kind of know that. Um, then you just do some more uh, tricks and then you, ben you eventually come up with this relationship, which is the concentration of the substrate over the substrate plus this K term. So I want you to remember that K term. So a half saturation coefficient. So if you guys heard of that, right? yeah. you guys have seen this, this is really familiar. Uh, so then this basic relationship is, uh, in mathematics, it's like a half rectangular parabola. Uh, 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 rectangular hyperbola, sorry. So it basically has that shape, like a sigmoidal curve. So that's how basically algae grow. They're kind of very slow, then they're very, they're very fast, and then there's this carrying capacity where they eventually level off. So that, that was uh, this sub-model that I coded up, and it basically just takes into the fine scale and it kind of reproduces the entire reaction <coughs> in numerically. So these are some of the results from the model. So the red is basically um, the, let's say it's nitrogen, right? You have nitrogen in the water, and this is algae, the blue is algae. <coughs> Should have made it green, but. Uh, uh, so as algae grows, it eats away some of the concentration, right? That makes sense. And then I just started playing around with these, uh, with these rates, whether it goes quicker in the forward direction or backward direction. So these are like rates that I can play around with for the software to play around with. So based on this, you can kind of match, uh, you can kind of change the amount of growth <coughs> of, of the algae and the amount of uptake by the substrate, in this case, nitrogen. And I just kept playing around. So this is kind of the, when it reaches equilibrium, they both, you guys have seen this, right? It both reaches some uh, kind of asymptotic value. Okay. And uh, now I wanted to apply my formula to something. Just wanted to see if it would actually work or not. So this is a, uh, another one of my advisors, Dr. Blurch's experiment. So if you, if you look at it, it's basically like a square meter and he basically grows benthic algae and there's this bucket and it kind of pours water over and he periodically supplies nitrogen once a day and it grows. And he's been doing this for like a year. He's just been studying if there's any relationship between turbulence or put some rocks in here. And those holes are basically, I, I keep taking samples because I want to see the changes over time and its growth rate. So basically, this is a picture of it. And um, kind of put markers, and I want to put it up into like four quadrants. So like north, south, east, west, southwest. Um, and then I took, uh, so I just paid, put a PVC, and then I, um, yeah, and then I just scraped it off, and then siphoned it off. And then those were my samples. I just, kept collecting a lot of samples and then after that I would oven dry them and weigh them and then basically came up with this plot. So if you see it, it still it has that kind of, uh, remember that, that kind of shape I was telling